before we start this video, a large thank you to Cockro, Friday, Quack, and Chris for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And of course, as always, an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Ryan Bellin for their insane support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is sincerely and greatly appreciated, gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, so I have this really horrible looking uh, lever here inside this thing called a saw rail and I'm just, you can just grab a lever anywhere you want on uh, free model sites but I decided just to stick to these random props together from the polygon dungeon pack and make this makeshift lever. It is horrendous but it will absolutely serve the purpose that we need from it. So I'm going to make this stick part, uh, call it lever 01 and the top I'm going to call it interactable lever 01. Actually, let's make an interactable call elevator lever 01. If you want to get really creative though, you can make levers hook up to any interactable you want. And just when you pull levers, call the dot interact command on that script. But we're not going to do that. We're going to be a bit more specific because uh, I don't imagine we'll be using levers for much else other than elevators. So I'm going to open up the script I just made called call elevator interactable. Delete start and update functionality. Put in my namespace as is per tradition. That is a mouthful. I'm gonna make this derive uh, from call elevator interactable, which is the script we made just a little while ago. And now I'm gonna make some comments. This will work like a regular call elevator interactable with a few differences. One, we will animate the lever. Optionally, wait for the lever animation to complete before actually calling the elevator. A coroutine is useful here. Two, optional, animate the player. I'm not gonna do this, but if you do this, you need to put the player in a specific point so they're matching up with the lever or put hand IK on your character when they pull it. And then lastly, you can be done with a coroutine as well. So just basically translate the player uh, smoothly into the position and put the interactable collider near that position so it's not so apparent when they're sliding over a little bit. Okay, lastly, pause and try this. You can totally do this. Go ahead and give it a try. It's great. Come back and see how I did it. All right, now I am going to begin by declaring a serializable field and I'm gonna say we want an animator type variable. I'm going to save this and I'm going to minimize this Visual Studio, go to my project here, get out of the animation window again. We're going to do some animating, not really, a very simplified version of animating. Let's go to the art and uh, animations and objects. And I'm going to call this one lever underscore pool underscore animation underscore 01. Cool, very nice, safe. Uh, I don't know what that means. Why? Okay, I'm gonna click ignore. So let's go over to the elevator stick, and I'm just gonna. You can see if I hold control and animate like this, it kind of goes nicely. You might want to use pivot and not center, depending on what you're using, because center will make it move from the center of the object versus pivot usually at a specific point. You want pivot for things like doors and levers and stuff that want to basically move on this well a pivot point. All right, so the first keyframe will be the elevator not moving at all, and the last keyframe will be the elevator in the fully moved position. Now, if you wanted to, you can make the elevator, or sorry, elevator lever reset by just putting equal space apart and then setting the same keyframe for it in that lock position, and then equal spaces apart again, and then the default position, so it looks something like this, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna keep the lever locked until the elevator is done moving. So I'm just going to keep this position here uh, in the lock and I'm going to make a new animation here by clicking create new clip and we'll call this one uh, lever reset or release uh, reset animation. Cool. And then the opposite, we're going to begin it by keyframing it in the uh, pull position. So go back to your pull animation. Very cool. And then you can keyframe that here and you want to drag in the uh, starting position there and it will basically just be the reverse of what you had. So uh, I'm gonna put it in the same distance apart too, so it will take the same time to reset as it did to pull. So this is our pulling animation and this is our resetting animation. Cool, looks good, very simple. All right, now let's go over to the interactable text. I'm gonna say call elevator. Uh, that's just identical to what the other one did, but we have to approach the lever for this one. I'm gonna drag the animator component up here just because I want to. And I'm going to make an empty animation state on the animator, and I'm gonna call it empty, which is how we start most of our uh, animated objects. And we set this as the default layer. Now we have the pull and release. I'm just gonna shorten those names to pull lever 01. And what's this one called reset? Yeah, we'll just call this one reset lever 01 real quick. There we go, just so I can see it in the animation window without the name being so long, it dots it out. All right, now come down here and add a collider of your choice. I'm gonna use a sphere collider. 
I feel like that's nice. Make the radius a bit wider, put the trigger on so we can actually interact with it and make it like a little bit lighter, wider than the lever. Now, if you're moving the player to a specific point, you might want to put it on one end or the other, depending on where you want to position the player. Uh, or you may want to have multiple animations depending on where your player is standing in respect to the lever. So let's drag in there and make a prefab. Uh, so you have two options here now. Actually, I'll get that in a second. First, let's go to the elevator button script and let's just copy and yoink uh, pretty much every variable regarding the elevator because we're literally going to reuse all this, but rename it. So the release time, we can apply to the lever before we actually move the elevator. So we can actually copy and yoink the coroutine as well and the activate elevator with button. Yoink that and uh, paste that down here. Steal from your former self and uh, use the code again. So go over to the animation, also the press and release button animation can be for the pull and reset lever. Drag that in there too. I'm going to make a header here and I'm going to call it animation or animator. And now I am going to go back over and yoink the using systems.collections and generic because we're going to be using a coroutine and a list. Well, actually, we're not using a list. Never mind, just the coroutine. So uh, rename this to pool lever animation. And we need this to release lever animation. Okay, and so let's go to activate elevator. The button is going to be activate elevator with lever. So you can see I'm just changing the keyword here. We're going to change some stuff though, obviously. Button has been pressed. This needs to be a network variable. We're going to change it to lever has been um, lever has been pulled. Yeah. Why does it need to be a network variable? We'll get to that in a second. So let's make that a network variable. I'm going to yoink a random network variable I found and rename it to this. So this has to be a network variable because when you're standing on a button, eventually the player's location will sync to that button. So it does need to be kept track of as a network variable. Like for example, on the elevator, because it's gonna be, your player's gonna be the same place on your uh, friend's screen if you move over the button eventually. But the lever, you're not standing on it to pull it, you're actually interacting with it. So we need to know if someone actually pulled this on their end so we can play the animation on both of our sides. So let's make a private enumerator wait for a lever animation, then move elevator. And we're gonna say lever.value has been pulled is equal to true. We need to do a check owner for this. And by the way, boys, this is all off the cuff. So I might make a couple mistakes. I'm not referencing this from Neff because I actually don't have a lever system for elevators in Neff. I'm gonna make one eventually, just haven't had to do that yet. Uh, so I might need to go back and correct something, but we'll see, maybe I won't have to. I've done this before, it's just been a very long time. All right, so levers and pulls equal to true. Elevator dot activate elevator server RPC. So we need to make a, a wait time now, though. How long I'm gonna wait before we actually move the elevator after the levers been pulled? Well, let's make a stereo float for time to wait after pulling lever to move elevator. Man, that is a very wordy variable, but hey, I know exactly what it does, so that's cool. And actually, I'm gonna say one, not 1 1.5, because I feel like 1.5 is a bit too long given how quick our animation moves. And I'm actually going to move this variable to to elevator because that uh, I feel like is more applicable. Now, all we're going to do is say yield return new wait for seconds. And we pass our variable for how long you want to wait before we actually attempt to move the elevator. So let's say time to wait. Uh, I'm not saying the whole variable name again. Now, let's move this owner check down here. We have to do two owner checks. Um, now, Although you can activate the server RPC for the elevator anywhere, we should only do it once. And we're gonna call this on a client RPC, so let's just only do that to for the owner of the object. So if for the owner of the object, after the time has passed, activate the server elevator server RPC, just so we don't do it twice. And then if we are the owner, uh, lever has been pulled is equal to true, that's before you do the wait time. Now, under activate elevator with lever, we're just simply gonna call pull lever server RPC. This does not exist yet, but we're gonna make it right now. Server RPC, remember to say require ownership is equal to false, so you can do this as a client as well and not just as the host. We're gonna say pool lever server RPC, and then we're going to come up here and say require ownership is equal to false. And now all we gotta do is make a client RPC. So again, you pull the lever, it sends a server RPC, the server RPC shoots uh, from the server and sends everyone a client RPC, and then this client RPC is sent to everybody, and we run that coroutine. So we're going to say if is server pull lever client RPC, and then we're simply going to say start coroutine, wait for lever, and move elevator. Looks good, cool, very awesome. All right, now let's come down here and we're going to rename elevator button coroutine to elevator lever coroutine. Very cool. And let's come down here, rename uh, wait for elevator button to reset or uh, to release. We're going to say lever to release. See, I'm saying release now instead of reset. So I'm probably going to change the animation name. Uh, remove the whole uh, waiting bit down here. 
and then we're going to say if is owner lever has been pulled that value is equal to false and we are good to go yeah so you need to check me you don't need to check me with standing on a button because there's no button to stand on now let's override the interact functionality here and let's actually call activate elevator with lever uh, we don't need to pass player why am i doing that whoops there we go okay cool save and let's go in here and let's drag in our interactable sphere glider and let's set this to an interactable glider or interactable layer rather sorry drag in your animator and call our animations which i'm now going to change from uh reset lever to release because i've been saying release this entire time and everywhere except for the actual animation so let's say release lever 01 and drag that in as well or rather copy and paste it okay very cool let's go to the elevator interactable now you can actually just um, make the lever a child object of this if you want to. That way there's no uh, weird stuff about getting it if you uh, just want to drag the elevator and, and lever into the scene as one. So I'm going to do that. And if you do that, you can actually remove the network object on the lever. Entirely up to you, though. You can fetch it through other means. But since these levers are only going to be hooked up to the elevator they spawn in with, there's no point in my mind not to make it as a child object and just share the one network object. So I'm going to drag in the elevator right there. Very cool. And I'll go down to this uh, destination high, delete it, and then put in my lever. So in case you missed that, I just replaced both the destination high and low triggers uh, with the lever we just made. And I am going to assign the levers properly by saying it's top destination call. I'm going to tick that there. And uh, yeah, we're going to drag those in in the elevator as well. So high and low recall. Just make sure you drag those in there like so. Uh, and make sure the elevator is dragged in on both of these levers. And I'm going to rename them to interactable call lever high and interactable call lever low, just so it's very clear at first glance what they do. Make sure your animations are not looping. Otherwise, the lever will pull back endlessly. It looks kind of funny. Uh, come in here to your call elevator interactable, and where we have uh, a lever interactable, and where we have activate elevator with lever, we're going to make a check here and make sure the elevator is not descending or rising. We also gotta check, make sure the other lever hasn't been pulled. Well, how are we gonna do that? We can erase this first comment here for if the lever has been pulled because we're gonna check for both. If we're using an elevator lever, it's safe to assume that the other destination is also a lever. If it's not, well, you gotta do some other whimsical stuff here, but we're going to assume that they are. So let's make these uh, destination recall variables public on the elevator, of course. And let's go over here and say if elevator dot low destination recall is an interactable elevator lever, uh, then we know we can do a check here and determine that it indeed is. So if it's actually pulled, we're not going to do anything. So we're going to say call elevator lever interactable lever is equal to elevator dot low destination recall as an elevator lever interactable because we just checked if it was. And if that lever dot is, uh, sorry, has been pulled. Where's that to? Uh, oh, right here. Lever hasn't pulled dot value. Simply return. And then we're going to do the same thing for the high destination. So copy and paste this. If elevator high destination is also a lever, make sure you check down here too. High destination. Uh, and that lever hasn't pulled. Simply return. This makes it so you can't pull the lever immediately after someone pulls it uh, on the bottom, having some weird time issues. Nothing should happen anyway, but this just makes it so you can't. So on the elevator, uh, delete this elevator variable on the call elevator lever because we already have one we're inheriting from. I just missed that. I was wondering why it was null check, but yeah, delete that and then make this original one protected under the call elevator interactable. Now save that, go back into the scene, make sure it's still in there. Yes, it is, cool. And now if I were to go in the project, climb the elevator or start it rather and wait down bottom, boom, I can call it back and you can see it does move. But the interactable doesn't go away. Why is that? Well, we didn't do a remove from interaction and I obviously can't get the interactable now because the elevator is not in the right position. But all we got to do is go to our lever and write down here immediately after we pull it in the coroutine or play the animation or before remove the interaction. All right. So you can see here I'm pulling the lever and it is indeed coming back down. And if I were to hop up here at the top and pull the lever, you can see it is indeed coming back up. And there you go, guys. You have the elevator working with buttons and call triggers and levers. And I think I've covered every variation of an elevator that I can. If you guys are really confused and want to use animations, I didn't cover it in this video because A, that would require me to get robbed and make us a couple of animations, which I can do if you want. 
but be uh, a person who's deep in this series can definitely surmise what to do on their own but if you don't know what to do and you want me to come back and cover this in another video i will come back and show how to sync up the player with the animations i won't use hand ik for it i'll just use animations that match up but hand ik is also a very good alternative that just requires you to have some kind of ik framework already set up Okay, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a very lovely weekend. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in, liking, commenting, and a special thank to my patrons, of course, for keeping my lights on. I will see you guys next week.